Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, round two of the Windows Insider uh, Build 2020 Virtual Booth Experience. Uh, we are happy to have all of you in chat. Uh, as it was playing the intro, uh, a bunch of people were com uh, commenting on the song and that music. Yeah, um, we kind of hijacked that little intro piece from marketing way back in the day. And yes, every time I play that music, I get like really pumped up because it means the webcast is actually starting. So I'm all like, yeah, I'm over here dancing, which I'm glad the camera's not on because nobody actually needs to see that happening live and in person. So <laughs> I even do it in the conference rooms, but you know, nobody, nobody there is going to make fun of me, at least not on camera. Uh, as Jen begins to show off her cats, <laughs> the pets are already making an appearance on stream. Uh, yeah, so welcome aboard. We're happy to have you. Um, in case there are new folks, uh, I don't even think we did intros yesterday. We just like jumped in and started talking. Um, so let's do a quick <laughs> round of intros. <laughs> I'm going to realize like I was a bad host yesterday. Uh, so real quick, let me do a round of intros. Uh, I am Jason Howard. I am a PM here on the Windows Insider Engineering team. You can find me on Twitter at North Face Hiker. Um, and then you can also find pretty much all of us on camera. We're also randomly... Uh, chatting behind the at Windows Insider handle on Twitter. Uh, so we'll just go in order, uh, at least clockwise, as I see folks. So, uh, Amanda, you are up next if you don't mind introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Amanda Langowski. Um, I lead the Windows Insider program, and that's me. She's the boss lady. <laughs> so don't wrap me out and don't get me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. Go ahead and DM me anytime. Let me know what Jason's up to. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up, that would be you, Jen, with your awesome blanket. Yeah. Oh, yes, my blanket. Um, <laughs> sorry. This is a blanket I got custom made for Halloween, but I love it, so I use it all the time. <laughs> um, I am Jen Gentleman. I am the only gentleman at Microsoft, as I like to say, uh, and I work on the team that owns the Windows Shell, which is basically everything you see when interacting with the core Windows operating system. So like file folder, taskbar, settings, um, start menu, touch keyboard, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and I help manage the incoming feedback and do investigations into stuff that's going on and let people know what we're working on. In short. In short. <laughs> I, I guess I've, I've worked at Microsoft for 11 years and done a variety of things, but I don't know. Uh, Eddie, in the bottom right corner as we continue around the clock. I mean, we're kind of like we're kind of like the Brady Bunch here, you know. I know, right? That's totally how I set it up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so most of you know me as DJ Eddie L on Twitter. I'm uh, one of the folks that Jason mentions behind the the Windows Insider handle as well, mostly answering technical questions. I'm a PM slash community manager um, on the Insider Engineering team. Awesome, and then Brandon with his extremely loud keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to fix it. I I'm Brandon. I'm a PM on the Windows Insider program team, and I get to um, write about all the cool stuff that we are releasing to insiders. You yes. can find me on Twitter at Brandon LeBlanc, and uh, yeah. And there's already noticed that somebody, uh, Simon, has already noticed that you added the Marshmallow Man from last night. This is the new addition <laughs> to the, the get up behind you. Yep. You make the smallest Raphael change, Hubbard. and somebody's going to notice. It's oh, like, yeah. Like, I don't think I changed anything from last night other than the position of the curtains behind me. But, you know, we're good there. <laughs> another blanket on the couch because I got cold. <laughs> <laughs> I swapped cats. I guess that that's what I mean. I didn't I don't have control over my cats. Yeah. They themselves chose the changing of the guards. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, so real quick, uh, let's do a little bit of outlining of why we're here, what we're doing. Um, I said something a little bit at the beginning, but uh, month to month as we do these webcasts, usually we have some sort of a 
a technical related topic exploring some piece of windows or the broader microsoft ecosystem and then of course you know once or twice a year we have the infamous bug bashes where we all get on camera and just have a whole lot of fun uh, this particular webcast, because of Build 2020 being remote, uh, where folks aren't attending in person, you didn't have to fly halfway around the world if you don't live in the U.S., um, we're getting together and we're doing it this way. And so for folks that usually attend Build, there are booths scattered throughout the, uh, the conference floor where you can go and visit the different teams, talk about different areas of the product, different features and such. Uh, so we figured, why not have the best of both worlds, where we do a webcast, and then still offer what was now a virtual booth experience. So we're getting together and doing that. Uh, we held a session yesterday evening. Uh, we held two of these because of the global nature of Build being online and digital and accessible to all, rather than just doing it at the typical Redmond time that we normally do when we're all in the office together. We figured, hey, we do two. So we did one last night to make sure folks, you know, in essence, halfway around the world from us had the opportunity to tune in during what would be daylight hours for them, which is a little bit out of character, right? Um, so unless they're staying up super late or super early, depending on where you're at, uh, you just get that experience and usually watch the video on demand. Although we do have some diehard fans that stay up till two and three in the morning. Uh, and they did that last night, which was totally crazy. Uh, and then now this is the normal time that we would broadcast. We would be online for about 90 minutes. Today we're going to be on for about two hours, give or take. Uh, Chit-chatting, talking about random stuff from Build, uh, random things from Windows, uh, answering questions about the Insider program if you have them. Again, this, we're not covering a specific technical topic. We're not going super deep in one individual area. Uh, but what, we have a lot to talk about. And, you know, of course, we love questions and whatever you have and want to talk about. Uh, one of the things that I will say real quick because I and I will show this several times during this broadcast is because of the virtual nature of this particular experience, we are providing a digital badge that will go into your feedback hub uh, as a thank you for attending this uh, virtual booth experience, this webcast. Uh, I showed the information last night. I will show it again today, uh, and it'll also apply for anybody who attends our expert session tomorrow. So before I forget to do it the first time. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up and show it to you. If you visit aka.ms slash whip build, uh, you can see the little badge on the left side. Uh, if you fill out the quick survey, it says it's two minutes. It probably won't even take you that long. It might take you 30 or 45 seconds. Uh, make sure and use the email that you have that's registered for the Windows Insider program. That's how we will connect this badge to your feedback hub so it shows appropriately. If you use a different email, you're going to get it in that one. So make sure it is your registered uh, Insider Microsoft account. Uh, but fill that out. Tell us what you think, both of this you know, virtual booth session. You can do it now. You can wait till the end. Totally up to you. And we will make sure and get this badge assigned to you uh, as a reminder and a memento to having attended this and been part of this online slash digital experience. Uh, and thank you, Simon, for adding that link in the chat. Uh, appreciate you doing that. So again, I will show this a few times throughout the webcast uh, as others uh, come and go along the way. I want to make sure everybody has the opportunity to see this and uh, receive this badge. So don't be surprised if I give this little spiel again in, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes or something. So with that, let me get back to having everybody on stream. Here we go. Beautiful. All right. So... Uh, Build is back at it this morning. There are more sessions going on right now. Uh, I want to ask uh, the folks that are in the chat, although there are some of the same folks in chat now uh, that were here last night, or at least last night for us, which was super early in the morning. Like, I see Andre in chat, which, Andre, what was it, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning for you last night when we were online? Uh, and here you are again. I just <laughs> I can't believe it, but, you know, I, I appreciate that. You know, thank you for the dedication. Uh, yeah, so I will say, let's do a quick round for those of you in the chat. What has been your favorite announcement at Build so far? I would love to see what it is that caught your attention and that you're excited about. Uh, sorry, there's two Andres in chat. I'm sorry, it's not Andre, uh, Bus, uh, it's, uh, A-A-V-D Berg. Uh, he's one of the Insider MVPs. Sorry, I apologize for the confusion. Yeah, so what are you excited about that you've, uh, heard about at Build so far? And Sinclairinator in chat 
uh, I would love to see what you're excited about because I've seen you tweeting like a madman uh, out there. Did you see that guy who made the graph of like all the people talking or doing impressions about build and like uh-uh. Sinclair, Jeremy was what like, he was up there, Donna or something like. Yeah, he was up there on the list. All, all I can say is that I saw him tweet, I don't know how many times yesterday, of, oh, this, and this, and this. And I was just <laughs> like, half my Twitter feed was Jeremy being pumped up about everything, which is it's super exciting, and I'm, I, I'm totally cool with it. Uh, so let me take a drink, and then I'm going to run through. We got a Project Reunion, Windows Terminal, Winget, Edge for Linux. Yeah. There was a screenshot. The, the Linux GUI for, for apps in WSL. Mm-hmm. A, lot of, a lot of... Uh, Project Reunion uh, is, is my favorite. I'm really excited about that. Oh, and, and the, uh, oh, oh, while we're going through this, it looks like Jen posted up a poll. Uh, is this your first build? If, you know, if this is the first build that you've attended, uh, give us a yes vote. If you, Man, if you, you said it was your first build? It, it is my first build, which is kind of weird, considering how long I've worked at Microsoft. But in the past, I've just I've sent my team, um, you know, build a great opportunity where it's you can connect with customers within Redmond. And so it's really accessible for a lot of folks on our team to go to that. Um, and so I typically I've let uh, other folks on my team go to attend. So this is my first experience, though it's uh, in my in my own house. It's still kind of cool. And. Uh, I, I love being able to check in on what happened early this morning and like last night. That's awesome. Well, welcome to your how many is this for you, like Jason? How many how many builds have you been to? Um, I attended one back in I think it was I think 2012, 2013. I skipped a couple of years because I was working on other projects where I didn't need to be there. And then I think I circled back um, in 2016, 17, 18, 19, and now. So I missed a couple of years in the middle. I think it was 14 and 15 that I wasn't there. So from 12 until now, minus those two years. How many builds have there been? Do any of you remember? I want to say that it wasn't, I I think PDC 2008 was the last PDC. And then after that, it became build. (laughs) But we also had mixer or mix as well. And they combined a few events, but I I think that was when we, I can look it up, but, um, cause like, I know that when we announced windows, seven it was at pdc 2008 but we announced bill like at bill some bill i can't remember i'm I'm looking it up uh yeah lots of folks that are in the chat uh this is their first one first digital one some people saying they're enjoying the new experience which is actually kind of cool we've actually uh talked a bit about that Uh oh here we go there's another there's another poll in the chat uh what's your favorite announcement yesterday is the terminal WSL Power Toys Maui reunion uh, announcements relating to Edge, something else, and then of course the all of the above button that Jen snuck in there, which is kind of cheap. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to judge too hard. I I hurriedly clicked on one that I was super excited about before I got all the way to the bottom. That's why you always read all the options uh, before you make a click. <laughs> so okay, I'm I'm, I'm going to do. Oh, Brandon, go ahead. Just real quick, yeah. So build started at two, in 2011, and that's when we announced the Windows 8 developer preview. So. All right. So I'm going to tell you a funny story because I love going on tangents, right? So in college, <laughs> in my senior year. <laughs> One of many tangents yeah, will go on to like, the air. Like, like, like that's not going to happen in the next two hours. Uh, in so college, my so- senior year, I was taking an econ course. And my teacher was known as a bit of a – he was super serious about people wanting to learn but he's also a bit of a jokester. He was also the Dean of the economics department. So, you know, I had to make sure to do really well in this class because he was my advisor and whatnot. And so we go to take the final for this econ class. It was a summer class, so it was compressed. Lots of homework, lots of work to do, lots of papers and all this kind of stuff. And so we get the final, right? And he hands them all out. He's like, okay, I'm just, you know, it's, you fill it in because it was a small class. There was only like 14 of us in this class. 
and me, I've always had a habit of just kind of scanning through the test, right? I'm going to be like, these are the questions that are easy to answer. These are the hard ones I know I'll need to spend more time on. And I flip all the way through and I get to the very last question. And it says, if you took the time to read this uh, exam and haven't filled out any of the questions, sign your name here and turn it in and you'll get an A. What? And I stopped and I was <laughs> like, excuse me? And I looked up at him because he saw that I had been flipping through the paper, right? Because he was watching to see if anybody was going to do it. And I look at him and he's just looking me dead in the face and was like, and gives me one single nod. And I was like, okay, so I signed my name, right? But then I was a jerk and I looked around to make sure everybody else had started taking the test. <laughs> <laughs> and then I got up and walked over and handed it to him. And I was just like, wow. And he was like, enjoy your summer. And everybody else is like, what's up with this dude, right? And they all start flipping through and everybody got to the lab and they're like, what? Like there's this collective like gasp and groan from everybody mm. in the room. And I'm walking out. I was the only one who actually read through the test and did it. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it was one of those. Mem- it was one of those very memorable moments from college because that doesn't really happen. The things like that, it's just crazy. I didn't, yeah, I don't remember a, a moment like that taking tests. But in my family, so my father, sister, and I all went to the same university. And there's a, a famous story when my sister went because she and my dad actually had the same professor. And apparently, like, he just didn't realize it. I mean, we have, you know, Jefferson is not a, that kind of last name. He didn't realize it until it was like a midterm or a final. And he was like looking through the names of attendees. And he was like, wait, Wendy Gentleman, as in more Gentleman's daughter? And she was like, yeah. And he. He just like went white as a sheet and like put down his papers and walked out of the uh, test room. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> unfortunately, by the time I went, so my, my sister is 14 years older than I am. So by the time I went to school, he had already retired, but probably just as well. Cause with that age, he, he may have been like, are you Mormon gentleman's granddaughter? <laughs> and then like, <laughs> Um, luckily that did not happen so oh, so somebody in chat says I haven't brought up the expected topic yet and put a funny emoji face there Sinclairinator what is the expected topic I'm super curious what this is arm support I don't know I, knowing him that's probably what it is um, something something arm 60. <laughs> Of course it's if, 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 I, if I recall some of the things he was tweeting, he may want to know more about some ARM 64, um, some app, like Win32 app support. But um, yeah, I'm curious as to what he, something, something, I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm with him. I love ARM. I love my Surface Pro X. Which right now Kilo is sleeping kind of on. Uh, let's see here Jason your sound is very quiet okay let me try adjusting that just a little bit oh no don't don't encourage Jason to get louder oh <laughs> thanks uh, yeah there it is <laughs> I appreciate that so, so he, 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 he said it, he brought it up he, he wants like x64 emulation on arm 64 I that, hope you submitted that in the feedback hub. I'm sure yeah. it has, but knowing <laughs> knowing Jeremy, that's that's already been done. Uh, thank thank you, Winobs, for tackling that. <laughs> uh, Michael's sorry, Brandon. Michael says that you need to pay the dog tax. Oh yeah, everybody wants to see Kilo. <laughs> All right, Kilo. <laughs> Twist oh my, my arm. All right, Kilo. So Eddie, say hi there. Oh, there's Kilo. We'll have a Kilo moment, hey. and then I've got a question for Eddie. Say hi to everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. I woke you up. You woke him <laughs> up for this? I did. There's Jason, Amanda, and everyone else. Woof, woof, Kilo. Woof, woof. What's up, Kilo? <laughs> he's, got, he's got that sleepy look where he's just like, blink, blink. Uh, what, Dad? He is. He wants to go back to sleep. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like, when 
we start leaving the house again, I feel like my cats are, I mean, they've just become accustomed to me being around all the time, so. Cats don't care. You cats say- are like, it's, cats are on the side of go back to work. <laughs> uh, okay, so I need to dismiss this poll. Um, my volume is about half of everybody else's. I turned the gain up on my mic. Hopefully that helps a little bit. And I will also try to speak up a little more. Um, oh, so here's the question that apparently they wanted to get asked. What about ARM 64 ISOs for the Insider Preview builds? Oh, I just, I just responded. Oh. Responded. <laughs> that's a, that's we, so I, I, I can answer that. We, we, we may be releasing VHDXs for... Um, ARM64, so that way people can use uh, Hyper-V to run Windows. Yeah. Yes. Oh, nice. um, shoot. Live in the 19.5 XX Plus builds, we added Hyper-V support for ARM64. Yeah, and that's why I'm releasing the VHDXs. So people... Um, maybe. <laughs> m- maybe. Maybe. Likely. Probably. <laughs> um, are, you, are you committing but, to something, Brandon? You know how that goes. I'm not. I'm not committal. I'm just. Uh, op- I, I'm. I'm optimistic. Ah, oh, that's okay. That's, that's a good choice of vocabulary. Um, but uh, but yeah, now that we have Hyper-V support in ARM, like on the Surface Pro X, um, we are looking to possibly maybe release the VHD access so you can have the Windows Guest OS. Um, I know that uh, we've got a lot of feedback about that, so I'm, I'm excited um, to try that out when we may be releasing that. But I would say look for something soon. Oh, my favorite word about the Insider program. Soon. Soon TM. Yeah. Yeah, someone was giving exactly. me someone was giving me a hard time about how I'm always the one that says you know nothing to share or uh, more to share later. Um, <laughs> and I, I will say that um, with this specific topic, um, soon means soon. <laughs> of, of course, Rich Woods is in there asking like build nineteen six twenty four soon. <laughs> It's of never course good enough. Is. It's never fast enough, right? I mean, he's onto something, but I mean, he's a good he's a good deducer of of logic and patterns. So I mean, don't give Rich credit; it's going to go to his head. Oh, I know. I, it's it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Uh, in the chat, a peach. Yes, thank you for getting the soon trademark. I couldn't figure out how to do the trademark thing fast enough on the keyboard, so I appreciate you, you tackling that. <laughs> <for me. laughs> Jason, we have it in the emoji picker. Do we really? Yeah. Yeah, if you just type TM, it should come up. I will say I don't use emojis enough. I know. I know. I'm, I'm showing my age. I'm a laggard here. Um, good times. Good times. Oh, let's see here. And now somebody's singing the Smiths. How soon is now? <laughs> All right. So uh, the, the question has come up a few times in chat. I just want to head it off. Um of are we flighting today? Obviously, we're past the prototypical time of 10 a.m. of flighting. Sometimes we flight at 2 p.m. Um, because of build being very online, very digital engaged, uh, sometimes we try to flight during build. We did last year. Um, we're not flighting today, which today is Wednesday morning here in the U.S. Uh, yeah. But uh, don't rule out the chance that we might do it tomorrow. So the week is only half over. We still have so many opportunities of awesomeness. Yeah. <laughs> so don't expect something today, but you know, you might well, you might want to watch the usual channels and information tomorrow about about 23 and a half hours from now. Just, you know, you know, hint hint wink I wink. I feel bad because like this is probably the one time that they won't have to struggle with conference center downloads <laughs> the builds yeah and we denied them that that ability but yeah you know, we didn't want them to you know have to reboot in the middle of today i, I mean steal some... the Ethernet cable from the demo table that's right oh yeah i mean to add some additional context to this like i mean one of the things we try to do when we start when we look at flighting um is not often but there are cases where we do have to navigate um some you know other company events and news happening to make sure that they're you know we, we keep people focused on one thing instead of trying to detract and so um we spend a lot of time working with other partner teams on these things which is i, I think one of the other pieces of of what makes working uh, on whip so exciting 
So um, we definitely do some sort of coordination with a lot of other folks, and that's fun. So. Oh my gosh, yeah. So um, actually, uh, Eddie, I mentioned that I wanted to ask you a couple questions. So I don't want to spoil. I I, I hinted it about it last night on the webcast, so I'll, I'll give a little bit of a hint. Some of the questions that we got in our virtual booth experience that we had last night, so last night's webcast, uh, was in relation to feedback, uh, how feedback has changed over the course of time, how has it influenced the development process, things of that nature. Uh, we gave some details, but then some of it was, hey, stay tuned for next month's podcast. Uh, Eddie and I spent some time recording. I won't, I won't share all the details on it, uh, cause you know, I don't want to ruin the surprise. So stay tuned the first Wednesday of next month of June, uh, for, uh, the next version of the podcast. Brandon, your typing is killing me, son. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> B. Love you. Day. Love you, Brandon. <laughs> he's going to forget to unmute himself and he's going to be like, <laughs> 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 exactly. Um, so without spoiling some of our conversation, right, uh, I know you've done a ton of work uh, as of late uh, in the Feedback Hub. You and I have been kind of racing each other, trying to see who can do our, you know, triaging each day. Yes. Kind of early. Eddie's, Eddie's got a few time zones on me, so I usually lose. Uh, you know, some, it's going to get done one way or another, but, you know, it, it doesn't it doesn't feel good coming in second place all the time. Dang it, Eddie. Um, <laughs> I'll sleep in late one day. Okay, okay. You have to you have to stay in bed till like you know eleven because you got what three hours on me. Be like, let me get yeah. there at eight, and you can start at eight oh five that day or eleven oh five. So one of the things that we did talk a little bit about, I will I will sneak peek a little bit of it. We talked a little bit about uh, classifications and filing and feedback hub, right? And since we we discussed it in last night's webcast, and I think it's worth kind of touching on a little bit here. Uh, so without completely ruining the entire podcast episode. Um, what are some of the interesting things you have found from users as you've gone through feedback? I'll leave it kind of uh, open-ended like that. Interesting things. Well, we won't go into specifics, that's for sure. Yeah. There's definitely like I said, don't, don't ruin some of the cool feedback. stuff that's on the podcast recording. I, I want to keep that. Like, <laughs> I want to hold on to it for the time being. Like, What, were, what are yeah. some tips and tricks you would give users as they file feedback? How's that? Categorization is a big thing. Um, repros, make sure you can reproduce the issue, um, and getting as much details. It's kind of high level, uh, but the categories, categories is a big thing is figuring out which category something needs to go into. We have a, a lot of folks that, that put things into, um, install an update that really should be in something else. And the update team shoot like a month or two time is a nebulous construct so i no longer remember how long it's been but a little while back i know the update team actually like it used to be the one windows update category and they or context and they split it up into like five different ones because they found that whenever anyone had feedback after an update they would file it under windows update even if the feedback didn't really have anything to do with the update process so they updated the context to kind of make that a little bit more clear that it was about the process versus settings afterwards versus whatever. Yeah, they, they have. They've added several subcategories, which has helped, but there's still a, a considerable amount that gets kind of put in there. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as, of course, you know, as random as these webcasts are, somebody has noticed Amanda's uh, earbuds. Uh-oh, and it looks like Amanda froze again. She's... Dun, dun, dun. Oh, yeah. yeah. She did freeze. Uh-oh. <laughs> <It is. laughs> did, did she freeze, or was she, or was she like, showing off the earbuds? And look at Brandon being a goofball on mute. That is funny. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let me take a moment, and I will let's see if I can get Amanda back on here. Maybe she put herself on pause. I think maybe she did. Oh, we can carry on. So looking back to the questions, uh, the the new skin offer, I'm, I'm assuming I completely butchered what that screen name is supposed to represent. Uh, but the question is, 
I want to ask, uh, wanna what ask are some of the challenges you face? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. There's a echo. I just unmuted my mic. I didn't change it anything. Back. Yeah, I don't know if it's Amanda or Brandon. Somebody's echoing. It's, it's stopped now. Okay. Sorry. Okay, thanks, Brandon. Um, whew. All these echoes, they, like, get me every time. I'm just like, no, no. <laughs> it's, like, one of the worst things uh, about the consistency in the UI, right? This is, this is a perennial topic that we touch on. I think we could ask this every single webcast. Uh, Jen, I don't even want to know how big your feedback bucket is on UI inconsistencies. Uh, I won't ask you to spend a lot of time talking about it, but since yeah. it was asked, if I could trouble you to touch on the topic briefly, uh, that would be awesome. So what specifically is the topic? About the difficulties that we face uh, in some of the UI consistency, or in this case, some of the inconsistencies that may exist. Um, I mean, specifically to feedback or addressing it, I would say... I, mean, I, think, I think they're asking in general. I mean, I could speak to some of it. I mean, yeah, a lot of it... They're, in Windows, Windows... Windows is very complex, and it has a lot of code that's been there for a long time, and there are certain elements that are tied to the UX that, as much as it looks visually like it's something easy for us to change, it's not so easy for us to change in the code. And so we have to be very mindful of that because it also can have ramifications to impact other parts of the user experience. So when we do make changes and want to make changes, we have to be very careful about how we do that. And so um, there's that component. The other component is that, uh, you know, we're very, 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 um, uh, we're, we're very, it, accessibility is really important. So whatever UX changes we do make, we also need to make sure that it, it is, um, it maintains a certain level of accessibility requirements. It has to be uh, keyboard navigatable. Yeah. It has to yeah. adhere to high contrast to have like proper color ratios. So everything stands out. Now. It is. Yeah. It's super rigorous because we care so much about just making sure windows is one of the most accessible things, you know, now more than ever. And so there's that component as well. And then lastly, um, you know, a lot of people, I, I, I get a lot of feedback, even on Twitter, you know, every day about people asking about this question. Um, the other thing is, as much as we want to change things all the time, we actually have gotten a lot of feedback that we're we, we had been changing things in Windows too often. And so it's like with, with the, the user experience in Windows, someone like my mom, if we're changing things on her so often, she gets uncomfortable using her PC. That's something we want to avoid. And so when we do make these changes, even if it's small tweaks to consistency, we have to be careful about all of these things. And so um, that would be my answer to that question. I don't know, Jen, that you have anything else to add, please. I guess I would just say like, we have continually been working on it and we will continue working on it. Um, I've personally learned a lot about, <laughs> about, the coding that it developed the OS and like how you know because even me coming into the Windows Insider program and moving from where I was to engineering five years ago I I also thought a lot of the same things like why is it why can't we change this and why can't we do this and um, one of the most, my most favorite pieces of uh, working on this team is that I get to have that interaction with the engineers working on the code and they actually will describe a lot of the complexities and so um, I've learned a lot about how uh, how things work. So, yeah, I know. I mean, as a team, like we have the the larger tracking items, which is generally just like improve consistency across the board. But then there are tons of different people that work on Windows, and everyone wants to know, like, for my specific area, which of these twenty feature requests or issues, it's way more than 20, but I'm just giving an example, should I prioritize? And so then it gets down to the question of like, in my area, what are the top feedback items that I should try to go after for this iteration? Um, and so, yeah, feedback comes up a lot in these discussions. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work that goes into prioritization uh, because like as much as we want to think that Windows 
has infinite resources at Microsoft. It's not the case. I mean, we have limited engineers who have limited time to work on things, and so we have to we have to measure it all, and 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 fit, prioritize where we're going to put our work in, you know, based off of a, a development cycle. Um, and that's also another area that I've also learned a lot about. So it's uh, it's interesting, but I mean, I would say that 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 teams definitely hear the feedback and and want to, to move the needle. So uh, I would say every single planning meeting I've ever been at, there's always a section which is like, what are the customers saying? What do the customers want? What is this addressing for the customer? Um, and discussions of like how after we make a change, like how do we successfully measure that this is what the customers wanted, for example. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm sitting here responding to a bunch of questions that are in chat. No, that's that's fine. I, I, I actually see a couple of good questions on feedback out there, too. Cadenza is asking what, what can be done if I have specific feedback that the average user rarely notices or encounters, but is affecting power users? That's that's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, <laughs> file it, obviously. Um, but, you know, if you have something that, that only affects you, and I know I know we've had some instances of, of this. I think Don actually might be on, on the um, webcast. I think I saw him out there. We've, I've worked with him, and there's some others as well. Uh, file the feedback and then share the link. Um, reach out to us in either Answers, Tech Community, Twitter, whichever your preferred method is, um, and, and let us know because, you know, if, if it's just one piece of feedback in there, sometimes it's a little hard to see. But if, if you could bring it to our attention, we can dig into it. So that's a good question. Um, Jeremy just asked, what are ways to provide some reassurance to users that they should utilize the feedback hub if they don't feel like things are being addressed? Um, and I guess I would say, like, one thing you can do to start with is the feedback hub, you can actually, if you go to the feedback section, they have an option to filter by feedback that has a Microsoft response and to filter by feedback marked changes made. Uh, and I know, like, I think by default, it's like a trending view. And so, like, the trending stuff may not have comments as quickly just because we get as a lot of feedback. But, like, we do make an effort. I mean, my team meets every single week to review all the, the feedback that's coming in and, like, try to prioritize even, like, making sure we can respond to as much of it as possible and add comments like if we don't have this so like an example would be we have feedback asking for a top bottom snapping zone in windows um, and we don't currently support that natively but that was one of the first power utility that was added to power toys and one of the reasons that it was added to power toys was be like all the feedback we were getting was an incentive for that so like power toys could help evaluate the pe feature and give people the opportunity to try it out outside the the normal windows release cycle so we went back to the feedback we have in the feedback hub and it's still in a we've got it state because Unless we added it natively, I wouldn't consider it changes made. But we updated the feedback. We were like, hey, we don't support this natively, but if you check out Power Toys, you can get what you want and set up your system this way. So, um, so there's, there's, uh -oh, echoing. Okay. there's two questions that popped up that I want to tackle. And... Uh, I yeah, you're echoing. Yeah, you're echoing. I have. Uh, I also have a question. I want to. Um, also, sorry, the sorry, echo was like, echo. It's, it's messing with me. I don't know who it is. Is it me? Uh, try muting your speakers real quick and see if that's it. Because your mic might be. Is it me? Uh, I'm talking, and it doesn't appear to be there anymore. So. Does it mean that? Uh, no, you sound fine, Amanda. Okay. Brandon, you wanted to take a question? I yeah. did, but Jason had questions too. He wanted to address, so I could I could wait, and, or like Jason, how would you tell me what to do? Um, <laughs> sorry, there's there's a few here that I want to tackle, like, and I'm trying to scroll back up so I don't lose any of them. The echo thing distracted me. I apologize to everybody. Um, one thing: how many programmers are actually working on doing Windows? 
uh, and building new features. Uh, literally tens of thousands. <laughs> I, I, will, I will just say that. It's, it's a lot. Um, let's see here. Here, just real quick. I have a question we're, about reunion, we're, getting, right? we're getting questions about Project Reunion, and I wanted to yeah. address that. So Project Reunion isn't going to immediately replace things, nor is it tied to to OS builds. It is going to be a set of, of tools and development SDKs that will allow developers to take advantage of both UWP and Win32 together in a single app. And so we released the WinUI 3 Preview 1 and the WebView 2 components to the, today or yesterday at Build. Those two pieces are the first components of the of the project reunion effort um developers need to go take those things and then start coding their apps based off of that it doesn't immediately replace things that are already there now people are going to have to go update their apps and change their apps and and it, it's it's now in the hands of the developers so there there isn't going to be an insider preview build that will have this nor a, a feature update for windows 10 either it's it's it actually allows developers to target um, back to all the way to, I think, RS5. Um, I, so I don't think you ever would get my bad. Yeah, so like there, there are, will be certain things that won't, that will have to be, you know, forward facing, but right now it's, it's, it's something, something that isn't a, 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 a thing that we're just going to update. It's going to have to have, have, to have lead out, lead out, to have updates and, and work that the work developers do and, and whatnot. And whatnot. So, so I just wanted, I just wanted to clarify that because we, we were getting some questions from, from um, Hot Kate, Hot Kate, Hot Kate, Hot Kate, Hot Kate, and a few others on that. Stop for a second. Did somebody change their audio settings because it's echoing like insanely again? I'm I'm touched touched anything. Haven't touched haven't touched anything. On me on me. This is the most. I mean, I mean, is it is like it bandwidth? like bandwidth? Like, someone, so much bandwidth? Be, be, is it is it me? Like, like no, I, like I'm literally just reading in chat, and all of a sudden the echo started again. Uh, I'm getting I'm getting teams notifications. notifications. Do you think, do you think that, that, that could be causing, that causing, that? causing it? No, because it's it's audio feedback. It doesn't have anything to do with teams. Like, I'm not. I'm not. Stop for a second, Brandon. <laughs> I'm going to change something. It's going to look really weird on stream. Forgive me for just a moment. All right. Say something again, Brandon. Um, hello, hello, Jason. Jason. How, How are, are you today? today? Eh, it's not as bad. So troubleshooting live, right? This is fun. Where's Jen and Brandon echo. That's what they said. But okay, Jen hasn't touched her computer. <laughs> And then, no, then, no, then no, I am admittedly louder. louder. I mean, I, I am a loud person. person. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, uh, I, mean, I can talk quieter. No, can you mute your speakers, Brandon? Like your audio output? I know you won't be able to hear anybody. Can you mute yourself for a second? There. Okay. Test, test. Yeah, that's literally it. His microphone is picking up his speakers. This is so crazy. So I'm going to ask him to use his headset. Okay. Brandon, come on. <laughs> so Brandon, come back. <laughs> you don't have to type it for him. Am I, I echoing? Am I still echoing? No. No, no, you sound great. Yeah. You may have to ping him in Teams. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Brandon. So while you're doing that, I'm going to take another question then. So we keep things moving. <laughs> So earlier back up <laughs> stars of <laughs> stars stars have asked earlier when people submit feedback do do we see the build number as part of it and the answer to that is a simple yes as long as everything's working as it should we should see the build number but I will note it's also important to put that in the subject of your feedback too it helps us pick something up real quick. Yeah, we also want to know like what ring they're in and other and other details if it's connected. Yeah, sometimes though, like with Bluetooth issues, it can be helpful to put it in the comment of the feedback. Even though, like, especially if you get a trace, like we'll see the device, but um, 
you have to dig into every single piece of feedback in order to see it, see that. Whereas if it's in the comments, like you just see it as you're reviewing all, all the feedback, feedback that's, that's coming, coming in through triage. triage. I, have I have put, put on, on my, my headset. headset. And it's trying to echo again. This makes no sense. Oh, isn't this glorious? <laughs> I don't know what would it have changed. I don't know. I'll send you guys all your or something, so you guys can all be cool. Everything was working just fine, and then suddenly it was all me again. I don't know. Yeah, hold on one second. Let me. Uh... Is it coffee time? I don't know. It might be because I'm running out. And it stopped again. So anyway, uh, so let me get to the question that I was gonna ask. That I was gonna talk to earlier. Um, I know Eddie has been tracking this. Eddie, I don't know if you have an update that you want to provide on air. Uh, not that I'm trying to put you on the spot, but I guess I'm going to put you on the spot anyway. Um, <laughs> the About folks having problems when installing the new builds where the installation stops at 61% and it's related to the Connexent drivers. And I know this is something we have talked about. Are there any updates on this particular scenario? Anything we can share with folks? Unfortunately, there, there's not anything to, to share. It's definitely being worked on. Um, it's Unfortunately, it's, it's a little more complicated than just a simple code change, so it's taking a bit longer. Um, we're hoping to have that one fixed soon. Um, please keep filing it if you're hitting it. Uh, we, the workaround has basically been to remove that Connexent driver, and uh, that seems to be getting people past it. But yeah, we, we definitely are. We, we've got plenty of internal repros and uh, folks are working hard to get that one fixed. I know it's been hanging out there forever. It's one that I've, trust me, on seems like on a daily basis, I'm pinging those folks to get a status. So I'm on top of it. Awesome. And thank you. Uh, so there's a question. Are we using Microsoft Teams? We're actually using a combination of different softwares um, or software. Softwares. Yeah, softwares. <laughs> softwares. I'm like, there's no S on the plural of software. It's just software. Um, <laughs> maybe I need more caffeine. Maybe I don't need more caffeine. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so we use different pieces of software to hook everybody in together. Uh, interestingly enough, the back end thing that we're using right now uh, that we, we had to figure out very quickly last month simply based upon the timing of trying to get everything in place uh, from working from home for the webcast was we're actually using a Skype desktop app. Sounds interesting, right? Uh, I did have a chat with uh, folks on the Teams team. I love saying that, the Teams team. Uh, I had some conversation with them and we're going to actually have a session where we sit and work through and figure out uh, how to potentially integrate it with the XSplit software that we use to see if there's a way that we could balance it out and use that client rather than using Skype. Uh, we haven't done that yet, so until then, I'm still using the Skype plan. So it may be another month or so. Um, anyway, but that's that's the update there. Um, there was a couple more questions I need to scroll back up to. Uh, Jen, what did you have? I saw someone ask, what's the difference between reporting feedback and the Windows error reporting system? Like, please wait a moment as we are sending the crash report to Microsoft. Um, and the answer is, well, one is user submitted, like someone is telling us what the problem is. And then the other is just pure data crash reports. Um, so if you hit a crash like that, you don't need to file feedback. However, we do find that sometimes seeing the actual repro steps can be really, really helpful in terms of assessing the priority of the crash. So we had like we had one um, shoot. I mean I guess we had one back in January which was impacting search for some users. And it was funny because like our measures at an all up level for search looked fine. But or at least within the normal bounds, but we started getting feedback from one particular flight about search not working. Uh, and we, when we analyzed the feedback, we realized they were all hitting the same crash. And all of the feedback was coming from Polish insiders. Uh, and we eventually realized it was something about like you had to be using Windows on a in a display language where dictation wasn't supported. But because of the feedback, 
like fixing that issue got prioritized over other stuff and like we fast tracked it into Maine and were able to fix it quickly. Um, I hope that answers the question. Sounds like it. Yeah, there's some audio weirdness again. Ah, hopefully it stops. No, no, no. It's just I'm just I'm just making note of it when it happens. This is gonna be this is one of the fun things about you know bending technology in ways that it wasn't necessarily designed to be used, but we're gonna make it. Brandon is like unplugging his mic. It is unplugged. I am strictly using the headphones, so it's not me. Raphael here, you can have. <laughs> Brandon has gone to the extreme. That's funny. Uh, okay, so there's actually I've taken note of a couple questions. You've probably seen some odd looks on my face as I'm reading through chat. Um, let's see here. There was a question about can you describe the difference between feedback hub feedback and the report sent thing? I think Jen started touching on this. I was reading the chats and I I, I will admit I did not catch everything that she had said. Um, some, I apologize. I apologize. Uh, when there are certain crashes on the system, there's automated log collections that happen, right? So that'll trigger. Uh, the Watson crash will get grabbed and uploaded. Uh, anything that goes into the feedback hub is obviously a very intentional action completed by the user. Uh, and so if a user does file the feedback, uh, the logs will get pulled in and attached to that feedback report. So um, there is obviously differences between some of the automatic log collection of what is programmed to be part of Windows. It'll happen regardless uh, versus a, an insider or a retail user saying, yes, I want to submit feedback. Here's something that I had experienced and going through that process. Those are very different things. So, so I mean, crashes are different from like uh, performance issues, for example. And so for that, for performance issues, feedback and like getting a trace of the issue is super critical in order to be able to un better understand what's going on in the system. Um, Follow up on this. So, Hot Cake X asked, uh, uh, "GSODs are automatically uploaded, right? Or do I need to use the feedback hub because I can't reproduce and record it?" You're right. You can't use repro mode to capture a GSOD because it wouldn't be running to capture it anyway. Uh, there are specific logs that are automatically uploaded after uh, a green screen or blue screen, uh, but it is helpful to file the feedback because of the verbatim that you can provide saying yep. I was using these particular apps or I was engaged in this particular action uh, when this took place. Um, I had, you know, four apps running and was in the middle of doing something or I noticed extremely high CPU usage before the, the crash happened. You can add some of those details in that don't uh, always get captured in the log itself. So you as an individual, you have more perspective into what was actually transpiring or what may have caused it as opposed to what some of the logs uh, would actually grab. So I, I would say do file feedback because it is helpful. So I would say hot KDX, uh, Jason answered that much better than I did in the chat. So listen to Jason. <laughs> um, I'd also say like, if some of you, if you, are you familiar with reliability monitor, um, which is like, it's an old control panel page and you can go and you can actually see the list of crashes that your device has hit. Um, and you can actually look up, it should link you to the bucket ID, um, which you can share with us if needed as well. Uh, but it can be pretty cool. Like I, sometimes for me, you know, I'm running an insider build and my, I'll see all my taskbar icons blank out and I'm like, Explorer just crashed. <laughs> and because I'm a nerd, I go to reliability monitor and I confirm that Explorer just crashed. And then I get to shake my fist at people. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cadenza in chat says possibilities microso microphone sensitivity is set to auto. Uh, so when it goes quiet and then sensitivity is increased and it catches up with the stream audio coming out of speakers. Yeah, I mean, that is absolutely a possibility. We will research that. We'll actually try to host like a mini stream with all of us to make sure that the next time we do this, um, that we have all those settings done correctly. That's the joy of, of doing this remotely. Like each time we do it, we're going to learn a little something about it, uh, whether it's hardware setup or video configuration. Um, we definitely learned a lesson last night in relation to feedback and echo, right? I realize we've had a few little echoes here along the way. Um, but we'll get better at it each time we do this. We learn a little something more. 
So, thanks for bearing with us as we as we uh, go through this and troubleshoot live while we're actually uh, well, broadcasting. Um, yes, Jesse said the solution is to never stop talking. Just keep <laughs> going, right? There's no echo if you never don't tell him that. Oh, yeah. So, uh, my name's Jason Howard, and let me tell you a little story. <laughs> As Amanda's sitting there going, no, please, just, no, don't do it, don't do it. I'm just quiet, I just, I'm just waiting, I'm just minding my business, minding my time. <laughs> it's like, it's like speed, where you, you can't go under a certain mileage, except oh, it's movie. with- yeah, you can't go under 55, yeah. Uh, so Sheila Monster in chat says, hey, Windows Insider, if there's an error with a third-party software or hardware, does Windows try to work with those other vendors to fix it? The answer is absolutely yes. Um, we have an entire category in Feedback Hub where we capture uh, app-related feedback. And then if you're having problems with third-party input devices or other connected devices, Wi-Fi cards, Bluetooth devices, uh, all of that can get captured in the Feedback Hub. And when you do file the feedback, we get information related to uh, like say you have three things connected via Bluetooth that are optional, like so you have a mouse and you have a headset, things like that. We'll get a a stack of what all is connected via that type of peripheral connection. So like using Bluetooth, for example, uh, and we can see which one's having an error. And if we see that there is a particular driver that's showing up again and again, or a particular piece of hardware that's having trouble interacting, uh, the research can be done to see if there's a potential configuration change that can be made within Windows. And if not, if it happens to be a driver, like a compatibility issue with a driver uh, that we've changed something in the OS and the OEM or hardware partner uh, needs to make an update to their driver, we actually do have teams um, that are uh, they're, 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 they're partner you know, management folks that work with hardware vendors, computer manufacturers, uh, third-party software folks, uh, such as like an antivirus client partners. Um, we actually do work with them directly to help them integrate more smoothly into Windows to help give them guidance and information on changes that are coming to Windows. These vendors and OEMs participate in the Insider program uh, and they actually have builds that get delivered to them so that they can test and do their compatibility appraisals and everything uh, as we make those changes within Windows. So kind of a long-winded answer, but the but to sum it up in the too long, didn't read type format, absolutely yes. And Jason, as since um, since Build does focus a lot on developers as well, like we have a little bit more of a topic on that later today. We can run the expert Q and A right about how developers can look if you're developing your own apps, how you can look to the Windows Insider program to develop something certain or similar to their and their systems, right? Yes, that is at so it's at one fifteen p.m. Pacific time. So mm -hmm. whatever time zone conversion you may need to do. Um, that is in, it's in two hours and 15 minutes from now. So we wrap up with the webcast in an hour, and then we have a break for an hour, and then we do the expert session. So if you're interested in attending that, it is it will be on the build uh, conference list and you can find it, uh, and you'll get to see me running through a presentation and then we'll be doing a group session of answering questions that users have. Sorry, WZOR posted the most, <laughs> A really, really unflattering screen grab of me. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. All right. <laughs> oh, I, I, I haven't, haven't, I haven't seen it. yours yet. Let's see here. By the way, post a screen grab of all of you, so enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I saw. saw I saw it posted on them. Uh, I haven't, I haven't so, seen. We get the brain into it too. Yeah, yeah, he got me he got my, my agent's agent 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 shield cup. <laughs> This is why I'm not talking about space. Awkward. 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 I, I, like, I, mean, I mean, I like the content, but in a way, in a way he's webcast, doing these webcasts, like, where, like we where we each have our own panel, and you can see the space. We each have our own, own, own mic. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's not the same for us, but I kind of like it. I just think. What's your take, Jason? Do you think you should see those? Yeah, yeah. My take is the echo has returned again. <laughs> Jason, 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 Jason,
Well, well I'm, I'm, if, 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 I'm, I'm just wondering, wondering if the actual happens, happens to someone, someone on our analysts fluctuate. Like, I don't know, know if that would be the case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The bandwidth. That's like the software. So what's really right. fun is I'm going to randomly <laughs> mute you all on Skype and see if it stops. So Jen, you're gonna have to unmute yourself. <laughs> yeah. So unmute yourself, Jen. I'll see when you. Do Hello, it. I am I'm unmuted. No, nope, you're still echoing. That's good times. Brandon, can you unmute yourself in Skype? <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad doing this. I am unmuted. unmuted. Okay. Eddie, you want to say something? I love how we're just doing this real time. It doesn't even matter. Just... Something, something, something dark side. Something, <laughs> something, something complete. Like, I'm a silhouette now. Whatever. Okay. It seems like it paused again. So I will, I will, I will take what I can get. Right. Uh, Tourniquet says, I'm the only one who never echoes. Yeah, I don't understand how, what, when, why. It it does not make any sense to me. Technically, people in the chat don't echo unless they're asking when is Tam X inside a program going to come. I've seen a lot of that. Some of them are echoing. <laughs> they're echoing their sentiments. <laughs> That's good times. All right. Uh, so let me. Hey, so let's see more questions. Let's see what you guys got. Yeah, let me. I'm scrolling back up. Are you guys aware of many people using pirated copies of Windows, and what steps is Microsoft taking to tackle the problem? Um, that I, I'm I'm not really sure. I should like jump into that question. Uh, I will simply I, I will I will give a very short and brief answer on it. Um, the way licensing is handled has changed a lot with Windows 10, especially with the concept of digital entitlements, and rather than some of the old ways that you would see like an XP or Windows 7 where Windows would at some point just stop booting because of you know it not being activated and being a genuine copy. Uh, Windows 10, uh, at least to the most update information I have, so if, if I am wrong, somebody please correct me. Um, it slowly limits features uh, where you can't make OS customizations and change things, things like that. Uh, and then you'll get those little reminders saying, hey, you know, you need to activate your copy of Windows, so on and so forth. But I don't believe it outright prevents your machine from booting. But I don't want to be quoted on that, but I probably will be since I already said it. <laughs> I think from our perspective, like, we don't, we don't worry too much about it. Yeah. As long as people keep getting flights, we want to keep enabling that. <laughs> so I guess it's the most accurate thing you can do. <laughs> Sorry. The dog keeps kicking open my door. Hold on. Sorry. But Nuno still was wanting to know if he can... dog picture? No, he's sleeping. He will, he will not like it if I try to pick him up. <laughs> he just keeps kicking it, though. I'll see him. Nuno Silva was wanting to know if he could have my background image. That is a good picture, Eddie. It's it's one I took at the booth last year, and unfortunately, Skype cuts off the, the outer edges of it. Mm -hmm. You guys are missing out because actually on, on this side of me over here, Allie is standing on the side of the booth, and off to the side over here is half of Joe Camp. Uh, he was <laughs> hoping he would make a special <laughs> appearance today, but he got cut off in the Skype window. That's funny. Uh... Vitamin J in the chat says the dino in the bottom middle never echoes. That's right. T-Rex never echoes because T-Rex doesn't have much to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody asked, where is the link for this <laughs> afternoon's <laughs> event? Will it be posted on the Insider Twitter so you can get to the expert conference? Yeah, let me let me pull it up on the build page because there should be a link to it. Yeah, we, we tweeted it out yesterday. Okay. I know. We, we probably need to retweet it. it. Yeah, I definitely. Tweet tweet again. Again. There's the daggum echo. Yeah, I do like the fact that both. I'm really sorry for all the echo, folks. I don't know. I, I've checked just about every single setting that I can check on here, and I I just I flat out don't know what it is at this point. So when that happens, um, I thank you in advance for bearing with us. 
to see. Uh, here's the sessions. View all the sessions. Let's see. Insider. Expert Q&A for the Insider program. So I'm going to drop a link in the chat. So if you're already registered for Bill... Oh, nope. Well, Jen beat me to it. Okay. Thanks, Jen. I don't want to, like, take, take away from your thunder while, while you're having your project, project to look it up. up. No, it's all right. <laughs> okay. I'm a little less backlit now. Ish. I'm going to mute him. Yeah, usually so my telling. cats are so chatty, but apparently they've decided to ditch us. Let's see here. What other questions have come in? Uh, are there any more in-development features for Pro for Workstations? Uh, I will admit that is not a specific piece of the OS that I keep up with. Um, I don't know if anybody else on the call has any indirect information. I, I can look into it. Um, okay. I know we did some stuff in 20H1 for that uh, edition of Windows, um, but it's a good question. Well, I'll, I'll have to look into it. Yeah. I know the folks over there. Um, somebody may mention Windows Insider Enterprise Preview is not activating, but Pro Preview did activate, been in the program for years. Uh, the Enterprise uh, builds, I do believe those need a VLK to run the mm -hmm. Enterprise. They do. So if you're not if you yeah, don't have do. a VLK, I don't believe it's going to activate properly. And thank you for confirming, Eddie. I know that's that's where Eddie came from. He was in the enterprise environment. So, and then I scrolled down a little further in the chat, and Jeremy had already asked enterprise. Do you have an enterprise VLK? <laughs> so <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm just behind in chat. So let me keep scrolling. <laughs> a basic question which was just like how long has everyone been using windows oh gosh well, do you remember what was your first windows pc jason 3.1 i have one of those sick huge crt monitors oh of course of course where it was like this big it was like this deep with the giant heat vents in the back because it felt like a microwave you could put a hot pocket on there and cook it. Um, yeah, it was it was ridiculous. The screen had that nice little green haze to it, and it was little, you know the bubble front and all that. Oh yeah, yeah, it was Windows three point one. That was that was where I got going, and I was I was super fascinated when we made the jump to Windows ninety five. I was like, whoa, look at this! It was like the whole thing felt like completely different in a very good way, of course. Was <laughs> Which was the one that added Notepad? Was that 95? Uh, I'm sure Wikipedia could tell us. I can't, I can't remember. remember. But I remember three, like my mom, uh, she used to work designing museum kiosk software for museums around the world. And so she actually had a home office um, in the basement where she did all sorts of work. And that's where she had a, a Windows 3.1 computer that I like to steal sometimes and play Lemmings and Tetris on. <laughs> so according to Wikipedia, um, Microsoft Notepad uh, was around since 1983, which is way before 95. Like, that is like old school. Mm. Um, I'm going to confess that I don't remember a lot from back then. Yeah. Um. I do know, um, I don't own it anymore, but for a very long time, I was one of the owners of, of a Windows 95 feature that exists in Windows today. And I'm <laughs> probably one of the few who's <laughs> seen the original specs, and I know now what was created really didn't look at all like what the original specs said it was going to do. Um, and yeah, I know way too much about how it works, including the code is full of go-to statements. <laughs> and nobody likes those. Nobody likes those. Uh, so I realized that I hadn't done this again. So a lot of people have come and gone. Let me do the badge 
moment here for everybody. Uh, again, for those who saw this earlier, uh, you get a little bit of a redux here. So for those of you who have joined the webcast, um, we are doing a special badge where if you take a moment to visit aka.ms slash whip build, you can complete this quick survey. Uh, it says it takes two minutes. You can do it a lot faster than that. Make sure you use your Microsoft account that is registered to the Windows Insider program. That's how we will connect uh, your uh, badge to the feedback hub for you. Uh, because build is an all digital event this year, and this is a virtual booth for build, uh, we are providing a virtual memento for those who come and spend time with us and hang out and chit chat. So if you visit that link, uh, give us a little feedback on what you thought of the experience. I know the echo, I, I, I can't wait for all the echo feedback that I'm probably going to get and I will take it in stride because, you know, it's just the way it's going to be. But hopefully you've enjoyed this experience, right? So drop us that there. Use your registered Microsoft account that is registered to the Insider Program. Uh, and within uh, a couple weeks after build is completed, we will get this badge appended and it will show up in Feedback Hub for you as a little way of saying thanks for coming and spending time with us and uh, chit-chatting and everything else. All right, so back to the good stuff. <laughs> you had to remind me to do that so I can get one for my feedback too. <laughs> I haven't done it yet. Uh, I did it. Me, I did mine. Yeah. 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 Oh man, I'm, I'm I'm finally catching up in chat because I'm I am uh, uh, antiquated here. There's lots of people talking about when they started using Windows. Oh, Jin did a poll as well. This is what I get for talking and not looking at the chat stream. Let's see here. Can you skip to the end of the survey and just sign your name? Uh, Barry Wallace asked. I I know that some of the questions are required. Like I think the one is like, are you a registered Windows Insider? I think that's a required question. Um, but you can, Dan Murphy said he submitted the feedback echo. Thanks. Thanks. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Make sure to file it underneath the insider, <laughs> the insider team one. So you have to triage it directly. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Pete. Gorilla. No, remember. Oh, go ahead. I'll Sorry, get it Andy. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's uh, Pete gorilla asked our F E. So iron, our iron build is going to be in the 20,000 range. I have no idea. We will they when it we says F E equals iron. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean the periodic table of the elements says that, but you know. Oh, okay. What is it, Ferium or something like that? Is the I, Iron Man's my favorite character in the Marvel movies. Iron is how I make all the money in Animal Crossing. Maybe he just met F E, or they just met F E. Iron is what I do to my clothes sometimes, so I don't know. I bet you haven't done that in a long time since you've been working for the last two months. Well, you know, given that I'm in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my my Cortana shirt from you know, what was that? <laughs> it was that May of 2018 that we did that webcast, right? Uh, I don't know if Frogosaurus is in the chat, but uh, it was it was totally his idea, which was awesome. Uh, Iron's I also good for pickaxe. I was seriously lacking in swag when I when I got dressed today. I don't have. I, 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 I will say I still have a box of all the sizes of these shirts, Amanda. So I will uh, I will happily provide you with one of these shirts that you can wear. Uh, Profit Real has asked: Is there something new for Windows Defender? So Windows Defender gets standalone updates. Um, you'll probably notice that when you scan for Windows updates, you get a lot of Defenders updates that way. So unless they change something that is at the super low level where it is an intentional hook into the Windows kernel and re require some sort of a cumulative update or a total OS uh, feature update, most of the changes that will come through Windows Defender will just kind of show up automatically because of the way that it's kind of stacked into the OS. Um, so changes that come with there, like we note some of those things in the Insider program at times. Um, there's not a whole laundry list of things that I think they've announced, so I won't jump too far into that because I do not want to get myself in trouble. But uh, Windows Defender, uh, as an application, is always undergoing changes, always improving. There's always updates to it, so just kind of keep your keep your eyes and ears out for that. Uh, and as new new things come forward, you will definitely hear about them. So Barry, Barry Wallace has a question out there. I have an outstanding issue for the last several builds. I've been adding a comment to my feedback hub entry each time. Is this helpful or is 
or is there a better way? So that's a good question. The better way, um, I mean, it is helpful, but it's it's more helpful if you actually submit a new feedback uh, for for each build, and that allows us to track it just a little bit better. Sometimes the the comments are, are don't provide enough information. I would assume yeah, in this circumstance, because of way. this user and how diligent they're being about tracking it, uh, I'm, I, I mean, I'm maybe making an incorrect assumption, but uh, if they're tagging on extra comments each time, I'm hoping that they're probably providing very detailed related information. And when you, when you tack information on the comments, when you comment on an existing feedback, we do get additional logs. So in this particular scenario, the comments, you know, going through that process may be enough, but um, one of the things that I can double check with is with the feedback hub team to make sure that we're gathering the additional information. To You're see talking if about when you upload, like when you go back to a piece of feedback, you have the ability to add information, including description and logs and stuff. But I think what the person in the chat may have been talking about is actually when you open the feedback and then you go down to the public section uh, to the comments there, I okay. think. Uh, and I don't, I don't think if you comment that way, it gets the same sort of logs. Uh, and right. it's not tracked the same sort of way either. So. Gotcha. Yeah, that was the way I was taking the question. This is what you're saying, yeah. Sorry, I, I took it a completely different way, my bad. <laughs> You look concerned, Brandon. I think is what the chat's trying to say. You're... I'm just writing an email. <laughs> uh -oh. Oh. I see. So I'm going back. Barry Wallace said, "I retired on January 1st. Every day is casual day. I'm nowhere near retirement <laughs> yet. <laughs> I don't have that luxury." Uh, I hear a dog. Jen, here's a dog. Is it your dog? Is it somebody else's dog outside, Jen? Uh, yeah, uh, Kilo was growling. Oh, okay. Oh. I don't know why, but he felt the need to growl. Um, okay, so here's a question about server. Is it a standard new policy for Windows server builds and that they are released the same day as the client build I noticed that the last few builds server releases around the same time as fast rain. Good question. You want to take that one, Brandon? Sorry, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> server ISOs look to be released uh, at the same time approximately as the fast, re fast ring releases. Uh, is that something we're doing intentionally? Um, right now, I know the server ISOs have been hit are on pause for a little bit, but they did make a decision to, to flight weekly. Um, the server team is not providing me a whole lot to, to document, and wrote, and so I, I, all I know is that they're releasing ISOs, but I don't have anything. I don't have anything to, to release in terms of release notes for inside at this point. So I can give them the feedback. I am giving them that feedback, but. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of all I have, have to add, add on the, the server ISOs. I think, it, I think they're more asking, like, is there this intention across our related products to align with Fastlight, like, for desktop, desktop along with the server? server. Um, there, there's, there's always been, been the intention. intention. Brennan, hang on one second. The echo has returned. I'm hoping a pause in the audio stream will fix it. Sorry, I, know, I totally interrupted your train of thought. I apologize. All right, give it a shot. There is always the intention for us to align the server builds with desktop builds, and we've done that in the past. So um, that is continuing. So you'll see that alignment. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's always been our intention. They're just now moving a little bit quicker. Okay. <laughs> I'm just baby Yoda. It could have been him. Yeah. Um, he has no feet. I'm saying. Yeah, I think that I think the echo is actually like a lag in. Even though I'm running this on the Surface Studio, I think it's a lag in the way the it's processing all the audio streams together. Um, yeah, interesting. Maybe it's just hardware. Maybe I need to maybe I need to build a new super awesome computer, or maybe I need to go to work and grab the Beam machine and bring it here. That or maybe cool. it's Maybelline. Oh gosh, there's a <laughs> '90s commercial throwback. 
Um, Igor suggested it was Baby Yoda, which I feel is a totally reasonable suggestion. It, it could be. be. He, he did make me crazy looking over his shoulder. He kicked you out of the chat, Amanda, yesterday, right? What was that? Baby Yoda kicked you out of the chat. He he, he He's a little bit uh, top-heavy, and he he dropped me right out of the call. It's <laughs> We're leaving no him back there. What was that? I said it's because he has no feet. I know. Creepy. Uh, so Sheila Monster asked a question that I don't totally understand, so I'm going to ask for some clarification. Can we get a definitive explanation on what game mode is and why it does or doesn't help sometimes? Uh, I feel like the game, probably like a creeple or someone is better equipped to answer that. Yeah. Uh, the, the game bar. Oh, sorry, go ahead. But I know, I mean, they take feedback super seriously and are, are always working on improvements. And like the new, well, not game mode, but game bar, the new SDK that went out and now like third party apps can integrate into it. It's all super cool. It'd be a cool topic for a webcast sometime. I'm just saying. <laughs> I think. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> See, this is, this is how I love it when topics organically pop up like this. Um, uh, so there's a question that I, I won't. I know I won't have the answer to this. We might have to ask somebody from WSL on it. A uh, question about the Linux in 2020 build. Can we access some Linux file system out of a? I'm, I'm going to assume that means a third party app for that. I I I don't know the answer to that. Want to see some chats here. Okay. Someone was asking, I see Prince was asking about where, where they can find the ISOs for insider builds. I just put a link to that in the chat. Yep. So. Um, cool. I. I think we might actually be caught up on all the questions. Hmm. Uh, Jeremy asked, uh, server insiders or ins Windows insiders are managed separately. Will, be, will we be hearing any more from the server team with regards to their insiders program? Um, I think, uh, I mean, you I sort of answer, Brandon, but... Yeah, the, I mean, I, I am constantly talking to them and giving them feedback that we need to be a little bit more transparent as to the the bills that we're releasing you know the isos um so they have my feedback um so the ball is in their court to to help me with documenting that uh for you guys but unfortunately that's all i have for right now so i guess we can go back so if we're all cut up on questions if we go back again to the concept of like the vision of this webcast is supposed to be like the insider booth, as if you could come up to us and ask questions, and we can ask you questions. What are some other the questions that you get regularly um, at the build booth, uh, Jason? I apologize, Jen. I was somebody put in the chat that they were trying to get an ISO, and they're getting this error message code. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll explain real quick what it is, and then I'll come back to your your question. Um, that I was actually responding to that one. Yeah, that error code <laughs> means that something has happened. It usually is the server thinking there's been too many attempts, and it actually potentially thinks there's something bad happening. Um, so it actually will time you out and prevent you from getting the content. It'll actually block you. So I'm going to reach out. I've got the error code, uh, and I will reach out to those folks so that they can unblock that for you, but that won't be until this afternoon. So hold tight. I would just say try again tomorrow, like, uh, and then you should be able to reach out and get that ISO. Once I provide them this code, they can they can unblock it. 
Um, Someone just asked, I think, an interesting question, which is, how does one go about getting hired at Microsoft? Which I would take as like, so for everyone here, how did you end up at Microsoft? Uh, Jason, you want to start? Sure. Um, I was was actually in telecommunications before I came to Microsoft. Uh, I had worked at a couple uh, different cell phone companies here in the U.S., uh, you probably heard of both of them, given that they just merged. I had worked at, I'd worked at IBM, then I had worked at Sprint, and then I worked at T-Mobile for many years. Um, I was doing originally, I was doing partner relationship management, and somebody that I had worked with at T-Mobile had moved over to Microsoft, and there was a role that had opened up uh, that they said that I would be a perfect fit for, and that I should investigate it. And I said, okay, I'll, you know, it never hurts to at least, you know, ask and see what's going on. So. I set up an informational with the hiring manager at Microsoft, which uh, what was supposed to be a, you know, a 10 to 15 minute, you know, basic information phone call turned into, I think it was an hour and a half informal, but full blown interview. (laughs) And so uh, ended up going through the full interview process and lo and behold, I ended up getting the job and presto been at Microsoft ever since. Uh, Brandon, what about you? Uh, I spaced out. What was the question? <laughs> How did you end was, up Microsoft? Oh, um, well, I was a vendor for a few years before, uh, and I, I was a vendor responsible for uh, kickstarting the Windows Vista team blog as a, a launch, a marketing launch tool for Windows Vista. And then um, after Vista shipped, they realized that the blog was a great mechanism for communicating directly to customers about the stuff we're doing in Windows. So uh, they brought me on full time to, to, to grow and continue to sustain the Windows uh, Vista team blog. And then eventually I transitioned it to the Windows blog because, you know, naturally we're going to have different Windows releases. So I wanted to position it to talk about all things Windows. Um, and then five and a half years ago, um, you know, Gabe came to me and said, hey, I need you to be on this new Windows Insider program team. And I said, cool. And I did. And then here I am. Amanda? I don't know. Are you Is there a Microsoft? Microsoft? Yeah. Uh, question? Um, I, uh, I grew up in the Seattle area. Um, so I was always, uh, always familiar with Microsoft. And it was one of the things I always kind of wanted to do. Um, and I took a job running the beta program for Windows Millennium or Windows Me, I think it was eventually called and, uh, learned a ton about all sorts of aspects of Windows and how software worked. And I just kind of fell in love with it and just took on more and more and different things from there. And I think it's, it was actually kind of unexpected, but loved it. What about you, Eddie? Uh, yeah, so <laughs> I, I came on board as a vendor. I got I actually, I'd worked with uh, Donna and Blair um, on the Windows Insider for Business program early on um, as a kind of a preview, uh, private preview at our company. And so I worked with them for a while. And then I got asked to come, come over and work with the uh, developer marketing team when uh, Jeremiah Marble was over there and work on a couple of things, they were looking for some IT pro, someone who was an IT pro and someone who had veteran experience. So being a, you know, in the Navy before, and then also being an IT pro, I kind of fit that bill to come over and work on a couple of programs. Um, so, and then there was a reorg, you know, which happens a lot. And then after that, I, I that's when I had the opportunity to come work, work over here with, with you guys and do some triaging. And you've been miserable so, ever since. Uh, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> oh my goodness! I love it. I love it. I like. I don't know. I mean, it feels really good to actually be there in the community, helping solve problems. Um, and we even like what? What was the one we were talking about the other day? Like someone shared a piece of feedback, and they were like, "I really enjoyed my." time in the insider program for various reasons I need to leave uh, and we like I think Jason you were the one who responded to it um, mm-hmm. and it's just nice like 
the good, the bad, the weird. Um, it feels it feels powerful to, to be like to see the customer comments all the time um, and to know what impact you're having on people. So, I wouldn't have it any other way. Yeah, that that has been one of the the most interesting and fascinating aspects of of this job in general. Right. If you go back to, you know, when I was a kid and you're like, hey, what do you want to do for a living? Right. My dad was a fireman. So, of course, you know, when I was super young, I was like, oh, I want to be a fireman, you know, because you kind of idealize your parents or whatnot. Uh, but then, you know, I was one of those weird kids that sat there and read a bunch of like encyclopedias and stuff. I don't know why. It was just my thing. Uh, and so it took me a while to find out what the term was, but uh, I actually wanted to be a paleontologist. So if you asked me when I was like seven, eight, nine years old, I would have been like, I want to go dig stuff up. Like I want to go dig up dinosaurs because I was super, super into dinosaurs. And so that was my thing, right? I could never have told you, I would have never have said, hey, I want to be on the internet, which didn't exist when I was eight years old, at least not in any public form like it exists today. Um, I had no idea that my career trajectory would kind of bring me to where I am right now. Uh, there was no such thing as the insider program. The internet didn't exist like it exists now. There were no streaming platforms. Twitter didn't exist. Google didn't exist. Everything was black and white. Yeah, there, yeah, there was yeah, practically black and white and then shades <laughs> of green, right? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so there was, there was entire segments of you know, the tech world that hadn't even been invented. Uh, back at that point and so to see where it's come and then you know how technology enables scenarios like this where we get to get together on stream on camera you know and chat with literally hundreds of people you know throughout the course of a few hours people coming people going uh talking and just having random conversation in real time like how technology brings all of this together but then some of the relationships that it helps you build along the way where you get to interact with the community and you know who people are. It's like, I can look at screen names in Mixer and I know who some of these people are either because I've chatted with them, you know, kind of virtually online so many times or for those that I've had the pleasure of meeting in person, right? Putting names to faces with internet persona, right? And you kind of build this, oh, I know who this person is. I've actually had conversations with them. You know, it's... It's fascinating, right? And of course, I never, never saw anything like this coming. Like, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Rich is—they didn't even invent blue skies until 1997. You're funny, Rich. <laughs> I thought dude. they were invented for the background for the wallpaper. <laughs> That's great. I liked uh, Scott Hanselman's talk yesterday. Bliss was the very first wallpaper that he used. Uh, and then I think he, he switched it two or three more times. And every time he switched it, his background lights would change in sync with changing the theme, which was so cool. Yeah, he, I think he shared on Twitter uh, what it was that he used to do that. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. I'm going to cheat and I'm taking up some screen resources. I'm going to piggyback over Brandon's screen and over Eddie just a little bit so I can. Wow, it's not me. I'm, I'm That's cheating. Fine. There we go. I'm doing the. <laughs> I'm doing this again, right? I should have probably had this up the entire time. Uh, if you want that build badge, don't forget, go visit aka.ms/slash whip build and we can uh, fill out the little short survey, use your registered insider account. And we will get you the Build 2020 digital badge and have that added to your feedback hub uh, list of badge accomplishments as a way of saying thank you for coming and spending time with us uh, and, you know, hanging out, asking us questions and participating in this virtual booth experience. Uh, so, you know, and just another way of saying, hey, thanks for thanks for being here and thanks for hanging out with us. And one of the things that, like, as we're talking about this, we this is more of the casual kind of booth experience where you pop in, say, hey, and unfortunately, you don't get to see your faces, um, but ask random questions. But I'm really curious to see what teams you like deep dives from. Um, we have a massive network within our direct team and, and those around us that can kind of give you a lot of insights on what 
were making and why they made it. And so really interested to see what you guys care about. Like, is it how we go about um, identifying the performance of Windows? I see a lot about UI design, but to me, it's kind of a big bucket. So I'm really curious to see what specific parts of the product are really interesting for you and the experiences that you love or could love more. And so we can kind of connect you to these really awesome, interesting people who are making all these things. Um, every time you kind of sit down and talk to like different people on your team, I, I always learn so much about um, other people. So I'm really excited to connect those people, the insiders, um, either in this type of forum or in blog posts or lots of different ways we can do that. So especially since now we're living in this more, more focused virtual world, super interested to find out what people want to hear about. I can't wait to pop into the MS poll results. I think we're going to start looking at that next week. So. You mean the uh, insider survey results? The annual survey results. I can't wait to. You said MS poll. Oh, did I? <laughs> 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 nice job, Amanda. I look at those too, but <laughs> unfortunately, insiders can't fill that out. So many polls. That's, that's But yeah, that's good uh, the good. insider poll. I'm really, really excited to look into that. Yeah, I always love seeing all the feedback and how things change year over year. How, has it been like three or four years? I mean, have we done the poll since the beginning? Yeah, the poll's been going for at least, I think at least four years. I think 2016 was probably the first time. Yeah. And we look at them year by year, but then also are looking to add new questions. And, you know, I think my goal is to figure out how we can get different types of insiders participating. Um, you know, we're not any time that we can kind of get insights for people who don't live in the Pacific Northwest and work at Microsoft is always just invaluable. Um, and so I know it sounds super nerdy. This is my nerdiness. Like I want to, I really do want to hear how it's working for other types of people. Even the people on the call like that we have here today, Jason, Brandon, Jen, Eddie, we're all different in our own ways. Um, like we have different home environments, we have different, um, you know, different sort of complexions of our family and how we use it. And so I just, I, I really do love hearing about everyone's different perspective. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the whole thing, right? Windows is used by on a, a billion devices, um, and it's hard to even like grasp the scale <laughs> of how many a billion is but there are so many different types of users and we want to make sure that we do the right thing for everyone, which is why diversity matters um, in the Insider program as we're developing features. <laughs> I think someone mentioned like home features, right? I think it's gonna be really interesting. I know for me, um, just seeing more about how like my kids are using devices all at the same time to do like homeschool we're all going to have to kind of adapt to some of those things. And so looking at what those experiences are, I think is what a lot of what Panos was talking about and his innovation blog he put out a couple of weeks ago, maybe two weeks ago, it's going to be super valuable. And the insiders are going to be the ones who will help kind of steer us uh, in the direction that works best for them. I mean, my, my all my kids want like Minecraft and stuff on there too, <laughs> but they also want to go run around and have it in separate rooms and, um, having that flexibility is super, super important. I'm um, just sharing a link to the Panos blog post in the chat. Perfect. Yeah, we got a request to do a virtual insider meetup. Um, and I'm teasing out some of the nuance of what that means, but I think it's something similar to like what we're doing here where, you know, it's the, the five of us where we can see each other and we're interacting but doing it in a broader context where we have a bunch of insiders. I don't know how that would scale. <laughs> um, I surely couldn't host it on my bandwidth connection like I'm doing with this particular webcast where everybody kind of would pull into one stream and then, you know, go back out. Uh, that would be, whew, that would be interesting. Uh, yeah, no, I'd love to see people's faces and hear their voices about what what it does. But we look at we look at uh, insider feedback on such a broad scale all the time. So it is kind of I do miss that sort of interaction of talking to people at the booth and 
you know, co- I think someone mentioned cocktail hour. Yeah, cocktail hour. It's a little, it's a little early here still, but <laughs> <laughs> it's always not the bad thing. It's always <laughs> So, somebody's asking, let's see, it's Streaker 1967. It's curious, are we using Surface tablets, Surface laptops? What's our preferred hardware? I'm using a Surface laptop too. My, so Skype is set up on my Surface Book 2, and this is my Surface laptop, but downstairs, so I'm streaming from my living room because downstairs my boyfriend works back to back with me right now. Um, so it just doesn't work well for streams. But I have a, a homebrewed tower PC with two 27 inch 2K monitors. Um, yeah, I had a good setup for working from home, minus the fact that there's somebody else there. <laughs> I have, I mean, I think right now I'm on a Surface Studio, um, and I have a Surface, well, I have two, we have two separate offices, because my husband works at Microsoft, too, and so we had one office now, since we're here both time, I kind of split up a little space space in the house, Uh, that's That's a very very important important thing, since we both do the calls, so we have two Surface Studios, I have a Surface Laptop, he has a Surface Laptop, and then um, he just grabbed his machine from work, which is behind me, I'm not really sure what the... Are, but is that the Samsung yeah. Ultra Wide? Is he using fancy zones? I don't know. It's he. It's his Think Vision. It still must be what Intel? Is that Intel or Lenovo? Um, I think it's like 40, 43 inches. But um, <laughs> I my normal my day to day like for working is is I love my Surface Studio, but. My mobile devices, I have a Surface laptop, I think one. Um, it's like a personal device. I'm Surface everywhere. I have a Surface um, a Surface Book 2, a 15-inch that I am using for the Skype, for this call here, and this is my work laptop. Then I have a Surface Studio, um, but I also have a Surface Pro 7, a Surface Pro X. Mm. Um, I have a Surface Pro 6. So I, I've, I'm, I'm all Surface everywhere. I do. Surf, surface headphones. I have a, I also have a, a Lenovo ThinkPad over there, and I have a Samsung Series 9 over there. So I'm not purely Surface. I have a variety of hardware, but now that I'm not going to meetings, I'm just stuck at home. I don't use as many devices. Yeah. Yeah, like, so the, the computer that this is actually being compiled on and streamed out from is a Surface Studio 2. And then I have my normal laptop, which is a Surface Book 2. Then I have uh, an earlier uh, prototype of the Surface Laptop 3. Um, I have an Asus Nova Go sitting over there that I was doing some testing on for ARM64. And then for my own personal thing, I have a computer, a home built machine, which is probably not surprising to anybody. Uh, I love building computers. I have one that's sitting over here that's been around for ages and had a few parts replaced and whatnot. Uh, So we got asked in chat, do we use competitor devices to get a feel for what they do better or to broaden the experience? Absolutely. There's an entire device lab that we have over in one of the buildings that has everything from any any major OEM that you've heard of that makes computers, right? So um, Asus, HP... Obviously, all the Microsoft equipment. Um, you keep going on down the list, right? There's, there's, there's Dell. Like, there's, there's tons of them. No, no, it's fine. We, we ha- what's that? Sorry, no, go ahead. Oh. Uh, we have those in a lab that are available for checkout, where you can take them home, you can use them, you can test drive them, get a feel for the hardware, get a feel for the speed, whether you like them or not. Um, and then, of course, you know, there's, and it's not just, you know. Uh, X64 stuff, there's ARM64 devices and, and so on and so forth. Uh, but yeah, so yes, it is as absolutely available and it's highly encouraged to try some of that out. Not everybody at work uses just Surface hardware, although it is very, very common. Um, I see people each day that have HPs and Lenovo's and so on and so forth. Like it's it's very common. 
Yeah, it's so important too to, to try different things. Like the kids, like the kids have school issued laptops, they're ASUS. And so it's not necessarily the hardware that we're tied into with Windows. Like Windows and Surface are definitely coming together. I don't really see third party OEMs as necessarily being competitor ones. Yeah, since I actually have a, a ThinkPad too, and then I also have another another device from another company that I use primarily for my DJ and stuff. So I really the ThinkPads are like tanks. Like I I never worry about I what was it? I didn't mention, but I actually grew up with Max, um, and my dad bought me a. Power book, I think, when I first went to university. And I think day two, I forgot it was in my backpack and threw my backpack off because it was heavy. <laughs> and it ended up just getting warped like a bubble in the frame <laughs> along the side. Um, and I've never had that problem with ThinkPads. Like, they, they can survive whatever ridiculous things I do can do with them. Yeah, I actually got a chance to tour uh, one of the the Lenovo facilities over here, and they did a demo of all the stuff that they do, testing out their hardware. And it's pretty cool. I, my wife actually dropped one one of my ThinkPads one time on our hardwood floors, and it, I, I kid you not, actually put a dent in the floor. And just the, the corner of the bezel popped off, and I just cracked, you know, snapped it back on, and it was perfectly fine. They're pretty sturdy. Oh, so I, so uh, Beirut's Diablo clarified, said, well, by hardware, I meant something like Apple devices, but your answer is kind of that answer too. We yes, we have access to non Windows hardware as well. Like it is, it is part of the lab. I apologize for not covering that. But yes, uh -oh. there are folks on campus who have um, Apple devices and run Boot Camp and dual boot into Windows and do that. Like that is that that happens as well. Like um, you know, there may have been a time in Microsoft history where that would have been a frowned upon. But you know, it is important for us to cover. The innovations that competitors are, you know, engaging in, you know, what are they changing? Uh, you know, what are the differences in hardware and how does it interact and what's the look and feel and everything? So, yeah, like, you know, there's still some, you know, diehard Windows fans that, you know, are like, mm, why is this person having, you know, having Mac hardware? But it is it that is absolutely a thing. It does happen. I have a I have a Mac uh, that I use to uh to be in there in Apple's version of the insider program to see how they run things and how they how you submit feedback and all that stuff so I can have an understanding of how they do their you know run their beta program so I have a Mac I also have an iPhone an Android device all of which are on the previews for uh, the the pre-release uh, software for for those those devices so um, I'm constantly updating and you know, staying in loop in the loop on like what they're doing um, and how they're doing it, um, partially just to help inform my m me and my role here at Microsoft, but also because I'm a nerd and I just like to do that stuff. So, I see someone asking who has their Lumia Windows Phone. So I worked on Windows Phone from the very from the very beginning when it was switched over from mobile to Windows Phone, and um, I I have a. I have at least, and my husband was on there too, so we have like a whole, I think, drawer full of every Windows phone possible. Um, I think we've seen them all. We stood in line to get the Lumias when they first came out. That was a really cool thing. I even went to, I even went to Korea to Samsung and um, huh. HTC cool. and stuff to see how they were, how they manufactured some of their stuff. And I'm going to regret showing this on camera, that. but I still have my 1020. It just sits. It literally sits in the drawer in my desk here. I have my 1020, my 1520, my 920, my 900. I have my you know 950s. I have the HTC. Um, I forgot what they called it, but had that cover that it was really neat. Uh, Samsung. Uh, the first Samsung Windows phone was really that was really nice to have that. Uh, I have my black my blackjack Windows Mobile. Oh gosh, I haven't uh, heard that name in a long time. Yeah, I love that Ooh. phone so much. Um, <laughs> I found a whole like I mean I have this giant bag of Windows phones and Windows Mobile devices that I, I have been keeping. Um, I even found my kin. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I, I have. I haven't heard in thirty years. 
Yeah, so my egg is still in the box. I only use it for about a week. <laughs> oh gosh, hey, yeah, someone I, asked. The whole chat's window <laughs> mobile now. <laughs> someone asked though, how many Microsoft employees run the Insider Builds? And that's a great question. I don't know what the exact number is right now. We look at those numbers obviously very closely. Um, we do offer like daily builds for for folks uh, internally within. I think we, I think we make it open to anyone within Microsoft now, not just Windows. Yeah, um, and so this used to be Windows. Um, for that yeah, well, did, I did make it the Microsoft thing. Yeah, no, but you can you can technically get like even the daily builds from what we call Canary and Selfos if you want to. But, um, and that's what all of my devices are on, even in my home, um, since I can kind of connect in and get that. But um, they're basically so close to what we give out to Insider Fast. There's not much difference. It's just mainly picking one, making sure it's good enough, and giving it out um, within a week. So it's people inside um, and people in the fast ring are really close in terms of how quickly they get the build out. Yeah. And then there is still the, the Amanda. I apologize. I don't. If if you said this, I may have missed it. We do have the Microsoft Ring, where there's tons and tons of people in that ring, right? Like, um, you know, yeah. this the same thing internally that you have externally, right? Where there's you know the ability to be in different rings depending on your appetite for how quickly you want builds and you know what you you know are hoping for from an end user experience. So, yeah, and, but yeah, also like from a wedding perspective, I mean, we it's not just we watch the number of people who use the internally that use the insider builds, but like we have written agreements for the number of hours that a particular build will have gotten used, uh, the number of devices that have used a certain feature um, that we want to meet before sending out builds. Somebody said, thankfully there's no more skip ahead. So the pillow, I am super curious as to why you're thankful that skip ahead is gone. As Amanda starts chuckling because she has various opinions on the whole concept. I of have a lot of opinions on how this should be done. I'm so excited about. <laughs> I'll just I'll stop. As as Jen would Audience say, management emotion. is so close to my. I, I yeah. agree. I agree with Amanda Audience strongly. <laughs> oh my goodness. I love. I love. Um, there we do. We have like a permanent skip ahead. Is how to think about it. But yeah, audience management is like. It's my trigger point, like where I'm like, okay, let me explain how this is going to work. Um, and really, the, the goals are just to make sure that we have um, the best way to kind of manage all these different things that we're doing and give insiders the most amount of choice they want in terms of stability and everything else. And we have some cool, cool stuff coming up about that, um, and we will talk about that more later. But uh, I definitely have feelings. I don't have a lot of feelings. I'm a quiet person, but like, I have a lot of feelings around um, branch management. Branch management and and I'll see if you find it, though. I won't, I, won't, I won't tell you which one it is. But Which one I have feelings about? <laughs> There's another one in the chat that you, you are going to have uh, some more feelings so about. About answering. I don't know if it's this one, so I'm going to oh. ask this one. And... <laughs> I see that one. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> Which one about how long it takes to build Windows? No, I'm not going to call it out on purpose. That's the whole point, Jason. <laughs> um, how would I set up? So we did an entire. So I will. I will politely derail the conversation to the the comment that Jason called out. I think we did a whole. I mean, we did a whole webcast on the build process. God, what was it? Two years ago, Jason? Now, but like. Building the entirety of Windows takes a while, um, especially yeah, I'm, when I'm you're not going to give a specific it. answer, but it takes a while. Yeah, um, and so when we're evaluating changes, sometimes we'll just—I mean, you know, internally as we're developing, like we'll just compile the binary that needs to be updated for our change, and then we will push it into a current build of Windows um, so that we can immediately try out the change without having to build the whole Windows. Yes, it is what I'd say for working around. Yep. And then once you like, it's good, and so you check it in, and then it goes through the whole process. 
Hey, Jason, uh, we're pretty much at time, so I'm just giving a reminder about that. Yep, we're a couple minutes still. So uh, yep. let, me go, let me go through some of the motions here to make sure we've got all of our bases covered uh, before we do our final wrap. Uh, I will show it one more time, the link to the survey for uh, Bill for the Insider Program. So uh, again, if you attended last night's webcast or today's webcast, or if you're going to attend the uh, expert session that we have in an hour and 15 minutes from now, uh, please do take a moment, visit aka.ms slash whip build, uh, fill out the little short survey we have there. Uh, please do use your registered uh, Windows Insider uh, account, so your Microsoft account. Um, by doing so, we will uh, be providing this particular Build 2020 badge uh, which will show up with your other badges in the feedback hub is a way of saying thank you, uh, not only for providing us with the feedback, but for taking time out of your day to come and hang out with us, ask us questions. Uh, you know, I love doing Q and A. Uh, everybody, you know, on this particular, you know, webcast, we all love doing Q and A. We love having the opportunity to interact with you. Uh, and this is just a small way for us to say thank you um, for, you know, for making that time and coming and, you know, Come and kicking it with us, <laughs> for lack of a, a better way of saying it. And then also we have one more, we have one more um, expert Q and A this afternoon, and an hour and fifteen minutes, right? Yep. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Lunch time. Yep. And so then still that. on my keyboard. Um, I, no I got about a million Teams notifications while we were <laughs> doing this webcast. So I'm a little afraid what I'm going to walk back into after I sign off. Hopefully Who knows? Who knows? Probably some funny pictures and a whole lot of randomness. But that's what's what's that, uh, you know, how's that any different from any other day on Twitter and the rest of the Internet? So um, folks are already saying bye. You know, we're wrapping up. I will simply say on behalf of myself, uh, and I'll go clockwise around the camera. I'm Jason Howard. You have Amanda Langowski in the top center, Jen Gentleman in the top right, Eddie Leonard in the bottom right, and then Brandon LeBlanc in the lower left. Um, thank you all on behalf of the crew here, the Windows Insider team. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for joining us. Uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the Build Conference. Uh, if you have any other questions or whatnot, come catch us in the Answers Forum. Uh, or if you are on Twitter, come visit us at Windows Insider. We'd love to chat with you further. And uh, yeah, again, thanks for making the time. Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of Build 2020. And uh, we will catch you again soon. And don't forget the podcast that comes out the first Wednesday of next month. Thanks, guys. Thank Bye, you. Everybody. Bye. Bye.